Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about lineups, and if you watch crime TV shows or movies, you've probably seen a lineup as a plot element. The idea is pretty simple. You have an eyewitness and you have a suspect, and you want to make sure that the suspect is the right person. So you bring the eyewitness in and you show them several people to see if they can pick out that suspect, and then the police know, hey, that's probably our guy. Now, most of the lineups you will see in these TV shows and movies are bad in various ways. So let's have a look at one particularly egregious example of a bad lineup. <clears throat> Number five, would you step forward, please? This is a really obviously bad lineup to the point where it's being played for laughs. I mean, number five knows he's screwed here because an eyewitness wants to pick somebody and they want to pick the right guy, which means that they often want to please the police officers and feel that they've done the right thing by picking the same suspect the police have. Now, when you look at this lineup, who are they going to pick? Number five, obviously, right? You're not going to say, oh, yeah, it's the guy in the uniform over there, number two. So this actually illustrates one of the potential pitfalls of lineup design, which is that you want the, the bad choices to be actually choices somebody could pick. You know, here where there are police officers in uniform, obviously no one's going to pick that. Now, this is not even a real lineup in the context of the movie. The movie's aware of this problem, and the whole point of this scene is that they're showing number five just how easy it would be to stick him with charges, even if he hasn't done anything. This is a little demonstration they're putting on for him, and the eyewitness isn't actually an eyewitness, it's another police officer. So, but this does tell us that bad lineup design is a potential danger. It's a way that innocent people can be convicted. Now, believe it or not, this is not the worst possible lineup. You can make even bigger mistakes than this. And so, let's go look at another famous lineup scene, just to see how you can possibly get worse than this. At that point, I wasn't scared. I knew I hadn't done anything they could do me for. Besides, it was fun. I got to make like I was notorious. All right, you all know the drill. When your number is called, step forward and repeat the phrase you've been given. Understand? Number one, step forward. You probably recognize that from the usual suspects, and that movie's been out for a while, so I'm not going to worry about spoilers here. Now you might be thinking, how is this possibly worse? Because that other one, four uniformed police officers, and it's so bad that they're using it as an intimidation tactic against that fifth guy. Well, the problem with this one is that everyone is a potential suspect. There's no sort of decoys or foils in that panel. So there's no wrong answer. Anybody you pick is just that, at that point, that's who the police are going to fixate on. And this is a problem because they've done studies of how people respond in these lineups. You can take random people and show them some sort of mock crime and then ask them to pick people out of a lineup. And the problem you end up with is that when you show somebody a lineup, they will almost always pick somebody where they've got this sort of menu of people like this. And that happens even if there isn't a right answer. Even if you know that the person who actually did the thing is not in that lineup. So if you don't have decoys, there's no way to detect that. There's no way to detect if somebody is just picking at random or picking the person they think is the best fit because everyone is a potential problem. And in fact, the people who are making the usual suspects knew that and they made this into a plot point that lots of people miss. One of the people involved in the sort of writing and production and all of this had worked as a detective. So they include this little bit to talk about how this is actually really suspicious. This whole thing was a shakedown. What makes you say that? How many times you been in the lineup? It's always you and four dummies. PD are paying homeless guys ten bucks a head half the time. And there's no way they'd lie in five felons in the same role. No way. So even in the movie, they're calling it out as weird that they're doing a lineup that's all targets and no decoys. This is actually one of the first clues that there's something unusual happening here. Now, it might surprise you to know that for many years, lineups were closer to that first clip that we saw than to the process being described by this character here. And the reason for that is because when the police need a bunch of decoys to fill out a lineup, 
Where's the easiest place to find them? Well, the police station itself. So what they'd do is they'd get a bunch of police officers to change out of their uniform and into their civilian clothes, and then they could fill out the lineup. The problem with that is that the police officers weren't a great sort of way to get decoys because they tended to be distinguishable from the, uh, from the actual target. And that's for a number of reasons. One, at the time, police forces weren't very diverse. So they had a difficulty with that. Um, another thing is that police officers tend to fall into a certain kind of type. They're people who work out, or they're people who eat well. Uh, maybe unlike the heroin addict who you think robbed the liquor store, you know, who might not be as healthy. Uh, their civilian clothes tend to show that they've got a little bit of money because police officers get paid a regular salary and can afford, you know, decent stuff. They're less likely to be dirty, and they're less likely to be all sorts of things. So what that ended up happening is you've got maybe, you know, four square cut guys who look like they're, you know, that they work out. And then this one sort of scrawny, dirty guy. And guess who gets picked? Now, even the, uh, the sort of lineup that you see where they bring all the people out at once has really fallen out of fashion. And part of this is because in Canada, there was a very famous wrongful conviction. That's the case of Mr. Sofano. And as a result of that wrongful conviction, they really did some deep digging and some deep analysis into lineups. So Mr. Sofano suffered terribly for it, but in many ways he's a Canadian hero for changing the shape of what our criminal justice system looks like to the better. And this is to the better because it means that we're going to get better lineups, better identifications, more certainty that when somebody picks somebody out, that it's the right person. So in terms of how lineups are usually done today, Usually they're not done with this uh, sort of line of people. They're instead what we call a photo lineup. So somebody's looking at pictures instead of, you know, live people. Now, in terms of the best possible design for a lineup, what you want is first a large number of decoys. Uh, the Sophonor Inquiry recommended that there be at least 10 people in the lineup with one of them being a target. And that's a minimum, right? That's at least that many people. And the best way to run a photo lineup is not where the way they do the live lineups where you have everybody there all at once. What you instead want is a sequential presentation. So each person is only looking at one picture at a time. And what that prevents is it prevents the thing that people otherwise do as sort of a, a mental shortcut. People will look at sort of the range of people kind of like a menu and pick the one they like best. But likes best doesn't mean necessarily that's the person. It just means it's the closest person. So when you show them all of the, the choices at once, you're much more likely to get a wrong choice. You know, somebody picks somebody and they might be confident about that person, but it's not the correct person. So ideally they look at one at a time. And then the next thing is that once you decide that that's not the person, uh, you flip the book and you never get to flip back. You don't get to go back and say, wait a minute, I, I think now that it was number one. You said no to number one. We're on to number two now. And, you know, on and on and on. And eventually you reach the end of the book. And if you haven't identified anybody, then you haven't identified anybody. Uh, there should also be an explicit caution to the person making the identification that the, the person might not actually be in the room. They should be warned, listen, we don't know if we have the right person. They, they might be here or they might not. And that way you can sort of mitigate the desire that people have to always pick somebody because they want to be helpful, right? They want, and they think that the police are probably good at their jobs, that they've probably arrested the right guy, and they're less sure about their, themselves than they are about the police. When in fact, the police are less sure about themselves than they are about the witness. So both people are coming at this from a place of lack of confidence, but the danger is really with the person who is sitting in the chair making the identification. The next thing is that the person in the room with the witness uh, should never know anything about the, uh, the details. It should really just be an officer who was not involved with the investigation, doesn't know anything at all, but is called in to help with the photo lineup. And the reason why is because when you have an officer who is involved, they can subtly and maybe intentionally, but usually unintentionally cue a witness. And they can, you know, when the witness picks the right or 
perhaps when they're looking at the correct photo, and I say correct, not necessarily in the sense of it's actually the person who did it. It's just the person the police think did it. They might, for instance, get a little tense and that might be picked up on somebody who says, oh, I think this is the person because they're reading the officer and not actually judging based on the picture. You might think this is silly, but there was actually a story of a horse called Clever Hans. And everybody thought that Clever Hans could do math and could count because they would give this horse a math question. And then the horse would start tapping its hoof to count out to a number. And it was really good. This horse was just nailing all of these math problems. People were going, this horse is real smart. Turns out, however, that the horse wasn't actually doing the math. What it was doing was looking at the person who asked the question. And when the horse started counting, they'd sort of look down and sort of wait for it. And then when the horse got to the right number, they'd have a little unconscious reaction. They'd kind of go, oh, and then the horse would stop counting. So the horse didn't know anything. It was just, you know, it was just reading those signals. And believe it or not, people do that too. The other thing is you want to be careful about who the decoys are because you don't want the decoys to be, you know, twins, exact clones of the person. You want some disparity, but you want it that every decoy choice is a real choice in the sense that they fit the description. You know, if somebody says that they were robbed by, you know, a man, you know, six feet tall uh, with a scar across his face, what you don't want is a decoy panel that is one man with a scar across his face and nine pictures of women because he's not going to pick one of those pictures or, you know, nine people who don't have the scar across their face. You know, at that point, those decoys are not really good decoys, right? They're not people that somebody could reasonably uh, choose if they if they weren't sure, right? You also want to only do the lineup once. And the reason for that is that people are actually really bad with, uh, with identifying where the feeling of familiarity comes from. Uh, lineup, uh, eyewitness identification in general is really bad. It is the primary source of wrongful convictions, but you don't want somebody to recognize somebody from the lineup twice. Because let's say you are unsure, right? You got robbed, it was dark, you're doing your best to help the police out in terms of finding this person and they run you through, you know, a series of pictures and you don't identify anybody. Well, okay, that's too bad. But the police are unhappy with this. They don't want to sort of end their investigation here. So maybe they show you a different lineup again. Now, what's going to be the common factor between these two lineups? Well, the person the police suspect did it. And so now when you're going through it, maybe you recognize that person from the robbery, or maybe you just recognize them from the lineup you did yesterday. And so then you have that familiarity. Or maybe uh, you explicitly recognize that this was the only person from the lineup that you saw yesterday because they've changed out all the decoys. At that point, you might think, oh, the police are pretty sure this is the guy because, you know, they're showing me the lineup again. And so you might say, oh, it's this guy because you want to please the police instead of because it's, you know, what you recognize. Showing or doing a second lineup with a witness is in fact very dangerous for the possibility of false identifications. Now, you might be thinking, where exactly are they going to get all of these, uh, all of these decoy pictures? If you're, you know, because... Police arrest people of all shapes and sizes and sort of profiles. And so where are they going to, you know, you're not going to have like an acting school on standby that you can bring people in. Usually what they're doing is they're using line or uh, they're using, you know, booking photos uh, taken from all sorts of people from other offenses. This is actually a much better practice when you think about it, because now they're able to use those photos of people who might have actually found themselves in a lineup themselves. So you've got a better pool of this. Uh, as mentioned, eyewitness identification is really uh, potentially dangerous. It is implicated in something like 70% of wrongful convictions. It's a major source of how the law gets things wrong because eyewitnesses are really 
not necessarily great at providing you know good evidence but they're really convincing they really persuade juries they really persuade judges they persuade whoever's making these decisions and we we tend to think of it as the gold standard of evidence when really maybe not so much so this is the danger that we run into but with proper good lineup design we can avoid a lot of these things ideally we also want the lineup to be recorded so you can see the witness and you can see when they're doing the lineup you know are they certain when they spot somebody is it like yes this is the guy i absolutely recognize this or do they have to talk themselves into it is it like eh, i don't know they could be maybe hmm you know one reaction is a lot less confident than the other uh, the the witness making the identification should also be asked to rate their own confidence even though that doesn't necessarily correlate with uh, with accuracy but the reason why is because witnesses tend to become more confident over time they might be unsure at the time they're actually sitting there looking at the picture making the identification but by the time the court case rolls around they've had all this time to convince themselves that they made the right call because of course people tend to do that you're rarely going to talk yourself into this notion that you made the wrong call you know so uh people tend to get more confident over time you'll quite often see situations where a witness during the lineup is like i don't know um maybe um could be and then at the actual time of the uh the actual time of doing the uh the court case they'll come in and be like yes this is the person i am 100 percent certain it could be no one else uh look at all these distinctive features that of course they identify on trial day when they're looking at the accused who's sitting in the box but they didn't identify before they made the identification they didn't identify during the lineup all of these are potential pitfalls and of course the the panel of people that you bring in like whether they're live people and you're recording this and you've got pictures of them or if you're using a photo lineup uh, the pictures that were used as decoys this should also be saved so that defense counsel can look at things and go okay really um you know they said there was a guy with a beard and you had you showed them 50 guys and only two of them had beards so this was really a coin flip and not a a proper evaluation you know these kinds of questions can then be evaluated by defense counsel to make arguments they can be evaluated by the prosecution in terms of deciding if they like this evidence and of course by the court or the jury to say hey is this that you know how confident are we that this is a proper lineup the difficulty with juries of course is that you may have to teach them all of these things about how lineups are done and what things are problematic because a lineup uh, might be deeply problematic but a jury might not see it so anyway i just kind of wanted to share this with you guys just a little bit of discussion about what goes into a lineup and how they're done nowadays and i can guarantee you you almost certainly you know if you watch a lot of crime uh, dramas be they movies or tv shows you're going to see lineups they're fairly common you will almost never see a lineup done right and the reason why is because a lineup done right is probably pretty boring a lot of the criminal justice system is way less interesting it's less showy and dramatic than they want to make it for these tv shows and movies and so forth uh, i actually kind of like both of these movies because it's clear that the people making the movies uh know some of the problems at least in a lineup but they wanted to do a different kind of lineup but they still are able to sort of uh, point the audience to what the issues are i can at least appreciate that uh, a lot more than a lot of the shows where they'll just run it straight they'll just show the lineup being done and tell the audience that this is a good lineup when really it's not anyway Thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting or educational. I also hope it's armed you with knowledge. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Canada's National Firearms Association, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, at the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited, and Mark Olivier Demour, and at the $20 level, McTain, Mark, Jane Babin Luxor, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Vicky Chefchik. 
Thank you for watching. I also, of course, want to thank my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you once again. I hope this has armed you with knowledge and see you next time.